Hello, Spot On followers. Guess what? We are back. We are back producing Spot On episodes every week to help you during this hunkering down. Uh, We had to change our course of action. We are not in the Spot On studio, but rather we're in... You know, remote places, and I'm telling you, I am recording this from my bathroom. Yes, from my bathroom. This is what I do for you. So follow us on the Spot On Facebook page. Subscribe to us every week. We're going to be giving you helpful episodes that are going to help you while you're hunkering down. Spot On is sponsored by the Wellbeing Project here at Boston University. This project is a new campus-wide initiative to support students' health and wellness during their time at the university. Log on to bu.edu to learn more about the Wellbeing Project. You are listening to Spot On, a health and wellness podcast that breaks through the latest media headlines to provide you with accurate and usable information that is, well, spot on, spot on to meet your needs. I am your host, Dr. Joan Salji Blake, a nutrition professor at Boston University and the author of the college textbook called Nutrition and You, which is used in colleges across the United States and abroad. Hello, Spot On listeners. Today, we have a fabulous, fabulous episode called Quarantine, How to Survive in the Kitchen. So what we did is we brought in our rock star, registered dietitian, Toby Amador. She's from New York City calling in, and she's going to be talking about how to survive in the kitchen. Okay, so you have a can of tomatoes, a can of chicks, peas, a box of pasta. Now what? That's what Toby's going to help us. So here we are today. I'm so, so excited to have, and so not even excited. I just need her for goodness gracious sakes. And she's gracious enough that when I email her, you know, with, I hate when people email me during this time with an explanation point because it's like, oh my gosh, what to happen? Why do you need me? But that's what I did to Toby Amadon, uh, who is a registered dietitian, a nutritionist in New York City, an author of a gazillion books. We have had her on before, so please go back to season one and season two of Spot On and, and listen to her fabric recordings. But um, I'm in SOS. I sent down an SOS to her, and I said, please come on the show because we are quarantined, we're locked down, and we need help in the kitchen. So with that, my good friend and colleague, Toby Amada, Amador, sorry, came on and said, absolutely, Joan, I'm here. And so, Toby, thank goodness you're on Spot On today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I'm always here for you. So you can SOS me anytime. Oh, good. Thank you. And I'll stop with the exclamation points in the emails. But okay, Tope, help, help, SOS. So, you know, we're, this is this crazy or is this crazy? And I have to tell you, you're in New York City for goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm actually right next door to the epicenter in Nershell, So Oh, there yeah, you go. I'm really but, close. But you know, Toby, you're always in the spotlight. So doesn't that just make all the sense <laughs> in the world? I, true, true. It, 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 true. Okay. It didn't surprise me. That's right. It didn't surprise me either. Okay, honey, help us. What is like the first thing we should be worried about? You know, let's talk about like fresh produce. Is it okay to have fresh produce now? Help us. Actually, you really do want fresh produce. Of course, frozen and canned are absolutely um, great too. But a lot of people I'm finding in the supermarkets, there's a lot of fresh produce being like not touched because people are afraid and you don't have to be afraid of it. We have to also have to remember one out of 10 Americans don't meet the recommended amounts for produce, specifically vegetables. And, you know, you want to eat it to help keep that immune system healthy as well. Um, so there's been a lot of talk. I'm sure you've seen, Joan, a lot of uh, how to wash your produce. Um, and a lot of people say bleach or soap. Ugh. Absolutely not. If you go to the CDC website, FDA, and I've spoken to a lot of food safety experts on farms and uh, FMI, the Food Manufacturers Institute, all you really want to do is water. Really just give it a good washing in water. And if it's like a melon or something with a, a rough exterior, like potatoes, maybe um, use a clean, stiff, bristled brush. That's it. It's fine. It's not a foodborne illness, and that we have to remember. You know, that's an excellent point, Toby, because, you know, people are, are, you know, so, you know, in tune now to washing hands that they think they have to wash their 
uh, produce. And you know, soap is meant for the outside of your body, not the inside. And so you're right. So you could have soap residue on or bleach residue at, um, on and your produce. And then they take, you know, taking that into the body. So that is excellent. And thank you for bringing that up. So that leads us to things that you don't have to wash. So can you please just tell everybody how wonderful canned, frozen and packaged foods are at this time? Absolutely. You know, something, you know, you don't want to go out to the store that often if you have to go out. I know I can't get online delivery times at all. And so it's, it, I have to go out. So I minimize it really to once a week, once every other week. And so canned foods really play a great role right now um, in keeping you nourished. And it lasts a very long time. And I have a ton of canned goods sitting in my pantry. All right, good. So it's, uh, if I run out, I'm coming down on, I'll yeah, drive down come and I'll come me. down and get yeah. you. So that's good. Uh, Tell why do you want to minimize trips to the grocery store? Well, that's where humans are, and humans are the ones where you're going to get it transmitted from. So just to reduce your risk, I try to go as, you know, as few times as possible. The less you venture out, you really do want to keep social distancing from other humans because it's it's saliva. That's how you're getting it, saliva droplets. Right. Um, and so, you know, people are touching the screens where your credit card goes and whatnot. And so, and, and people are passing by you. You, you never know. So I just, I, I like to, you know. So, minimize right, as much so, as possible. Right, you so know, shop for the week rather than shopping for every day. And that's, you know, habitually, that's what we used to do. Oh, what's the, for dinner tonight? We used to go to the supermarket every day, you know, or, yeah. or take out. So now we got to start thinking long term, and that's a planning. Really, yeah, yeah, planning. Yeah, meal planning. Meal yeah. planning. Oh, didn't we not do an episode on meal planning? Because Toby has fabulous meal planning uh, cookbooks. Toby, what are, what are the names of those, and where can they get them? Um, on Amazon, they're still in Walmart, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, they're all over, but, um, smart meal prep for beginners. So it's just mm-hmm. meal prepping, how to cook like large batches that'll last you the week. And then, um, the healthy meal prep cookbook. So, and then I have also an easy five ingredient cookbook oh. where you could do a lot of the same things. Okay. That's the one that's going to be a sellout because, you know, um, Tell us the kinds of foods we should be stockpiling in the kitchen to make, you know, balanced, healthy meals and snacks. So give us some tips. So I like, I have a lot of chickpeas. I'm also from Israel, so I like chickpeas and hummus, and I like to put them in salads and pasta. Um, Beans, all kinds of beans, and you'll see, like, I'll go in the morning purposely because that's when deliveries are, and so you'll see a little bit um, more food. Like, if canned goods are being sold out, you'll find them more likely in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me see what else I do. I have certainly whole grains I have in there. Quinoa, I had a big, huge quinoa container from Costco, so I'm set for quinoa for a bunch of months. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brown rice I have. Um, I also have canned vegetables and fruits. So I'm trying to get as many of my food groups as possible in there. You can even buy dry milk and reconstitute it up and add it also. If you want protein to smoothies and whatnot, you can add a little bit of that dry milk to it too. Right. So for for people that maybe have just forgotten the food groups, you know, we're going to put a picture of my plate up on the um, spot on Facebook page. But the food groups, when, when, when Toby just said that, the food groups are fruits, vegetables, grain, protein groups and milk. So Tobe, let's go through that and tell us how you can get each food group in a shelf-stable fashion. So let's start with uh, fruit. So fruit, you want to get, you can get canned fruit in its own, or you can get, um, yeah, canned fruit in its own juices or in light syrup. I mean, really, if the only choice is heavy syrup, you can rinse it a little bit, right. but that one does have a lot of added sugar. And you know, I um, love canned pineapples. I love, I mean, they're, they're terrific. So, you know, the, the canned, what's good about the canned is that they are, they are sealed in that um, uh, container and the nutrition is still there. So what would be, a, what would be like a vegetable f- canned or frozen give us an example um tomatoes for frozen Mm. i buy a lot of the mixed ones Mm because what i do is i'll take this is what i did for my kids the other day for the first time and they devoured it (gasps) so i had canned chicken which people forget about i put canned chicken into pasta and then I had, um, you could do canned or jarred tomato sauce. And then I took a frozen mixed vegetables and I put it in there. 
Ooh. And so you basically have, and then you can sprinkle it if you have some Parmesan cheese or whatever cheese you have, you can sprinkle it over. And you basically have all the food groups right that, there. That's right. That's right. The only one missing was the fruit. It opened up the can of pineapple and you got- For dessert. Or, right, yeah. for dessert. And see, so I think that people don't realize that from their pantry, they can really, really eat healthfully. They just got, they just got to learn how to put the, all things together. And you talked about you know chickpeas and canned tomatoes, which I absolutely love. So if you could do beans, or chickpeas and tomatoes and pasta and veggies, you can have like a vegetarian one, right? Absolutely. Yep. You can have that. And I call it, I've heard the term cantry. Ah. You should build up your cantry. I knew you would like that. (laughs) I love that. Hashtag cantry. Okay. We're going to use that when we promote this episode. That's super. Are you having trouble sleeping, focusing, or relaxing? If the answer is yes, then the TM Soft's White Noise Sleep Sounds podcast has got you covered. This hour-long podcast is made to help you get rid of distractions, reduce stress, relax, and most importantly, get better sleep. You can listen to sounds of nature, white noise, relaxing music, and much, much more. You can check out the TM Soft's White Noise Sleep Sounds podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Give us some online resources that folks can go to learn how to cook. You know, I can only imagine that people are calling you from all over, all your relatives, how do you make this? Because you're like the go-to person. But, you know, how, where can they go to, to get resources, to, tips on how to cook? Do you, like, have stuff on your website? Or? I always have on my, uh, all on my social media channels, I always have, you know, whatever's new and, like, how to wash your produce was the latest article I did or how to eat out, you know, safely or, I'm you can't eat out, but order in from a restaurant, mm-hmm. you know, safely. So any of those. And then my website, tobyamadornutrition.com. I have a ton of like really easy recipes. And the ingredients I, I use are, are ones that you can find now, even now in the supermarkets. I, I, I don't try to make you, you know, go online for weird ingredients right. um, because – I don't want to do that. So. Right, right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, Toby, you do not need fresh dill, do you? You do not need fresh basil. No, yeah. <laughs> Though I did buy some. I did find some at Whole Foods today right. because I, I'm still working on some, developing some recipes. Right. Um, but I've been using also, I've been um, using dry right. Dry herbs and spices, which are really nice to add flavor to dishes for very few calories. That's right. And, you know, we buy these things, you know, besides cinnamon, you can get dried herbs. And, and they're fabulous. And people just think that you know, everything has to be fresh. And it doesn't. Everything has to no. be nutritious. And that's Correct. what we want it to be. So give me your top three meals, you know, easy to make meals, you know, for college students or anybody to whip together. Uh, oh, I just made a good one last what? night. So my kids love quesadillas. Mm. So you can either do, if you want to do the canned chicken, you could do it. Or you can do, if you grilled some chicken, mm-hmm. um, you can put that. Anything you want, honestly. You even have leftover chili. You can put it in the quesadilla. And then you put cheese because that sticks everything together. Mm-hmm. Like grate a little bit of cheese. And then you put it a stovetop. Um, you put two, I did whole wheat uh, tortillas, and that's it. And you basically cook it up a few minutes on each side. Watch that it doesn't burn. You want a medium-low heat, and that's that. And it's done, and I served it with some jarred salsa. Wow. Again, everything basically out of the pantry. And, you know, you can get frozen chicken already cooked, right, in bags? Yes, yes. I also use a lot of frozen meals are great. All you do is add, you can add a salad or you can add some of those frozen vegetables on the side to just bulk it up a little bit more. Right. Um, And also I've been, another thing I've been doing is using leftovers. So I had like some leftover chopped kale and spinach that were fresh. And what I did was I just put a little olive oil and sauteed them. And I had like a really healthy side dish and it took five minutes to make. Yeah, see, fabulous. So, so in other words, you're shopping your refrigerator and using yeah. up stuff so we're reducing food waste because we don't want to be wasting food during this you know, time where we're all hunkering down. And this is time to get really, really creative. What's your, what's your third uh, healthy meal that's quick to put together? What else did I do? Oh, I've been doing, I like steak. And so my boyfriend's been barbecuing and my kids love how he barbecues. So we we take a marinade. I'm a very big fan of the soy vase. They're very delicious. Um, But you can make your own barbecue, whatever sauce or, or you make your own. 
um, and I marinate it and we grill it. And then with that, I actually do a boxed couscous um, and I saute up mushrooms Mm. to add vegetables with that. Um, Mm. And then I'll always have either a salad or I'll do um, some frozen vegetables on the side or canned vegetables. Right, and I would imagine if you're grilling up a lot of steak, you can use that over and over, fajitas and everything else, right? It's that That's the point. We do like a big London broil. Um, I mean, we do like a, probably a few pound London broil, yeah. and then we have it for the whole week to right. do whatever we want. And my kids love mashed potatoes. I bought a big thing of russet potatoes. Um, I've been making them mashed and baked and, and all kinds of ways for roasted. Um, so you really can utilize, if you go to the market or have a delivery, just buy the big bag and use it. Right, right. And, you know, uh, a London broil is very lean and very inexpensive. So, exactly. Yeah, so again, it's, you know, people right now are also looking to have meals that are thrifty. And by the way, we, we have a whole episode on Spot On called Eating on the Cheap. So another good one to, you know, tune into to, to combine what Toby's saying and have how to get the best prices. And and lastly, you know, you know, Toby, timing is everything in life. And I don't know how you did this, my dear, but it doesn't surprise me. You are about to have a brand new text a textbook. Listen to me, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> a brand new cookbook. <laughs> Who knows? You may be having a textbook. Who knows what you're doing everything. No, but, no, no. No, no but you may be you, you're releasing a new cookbook book and tell everybody the name of this because timing is everything. Go ahead, hon. So it's called The Best Rotisserie Chicken Ever. It's over 100 recipes using a store-bought bird, and it's pre-ordered right now on Amazon. And let me tell you, there are rotisserie chickens in every supermarket I've poked my head into. I've been on um, you know, house in the house basically for four weeks, and every supermarket I've gone to has it. Um, and I have some sample recipes. I think I have like six or eight recipes already on my website, um, with just amazing comfort food, like a chicken parm, you know, with, um, uh, using rotisserie chicken or a pasta dish, um, also using rotisserie chicken, a salad. So all sorts of, of dishes, a dip. Right. I mean, is this not perfect? We're hunkering down, right? We don't know what to do. Now you have a cookbook that basically says rotisserie chickens that you can live on for a month. I mean, and I, I, this is absolutely fabulous and it's great. And what we're going to do when the book comes out, as, as Toby says, you can pre-order it on Amazon or Walmart, whatever. Uh, but but we're going to pull out some of uh, um, the recipes that are on our website so that you can see them and start, you know, taking your rotisserie chickens and using her recipes. And when the book uh, gets delivered from Amazon, you could just go forever. You could be living on these recipes. So timing is everything. I don't know how the heck you planned this to make this uh, cookbook come out, but boy, you are fabulous, as always. So I want to thank you for helping me, my SOS, to come on spot on to help all of us eat more healthy while we hunker on. I should say hunker down. Thank you so much, Toby Imadar. No, oh, thank you so much for having me. Spot On is sponsored by the Wellbeing Project here at Boston University. This project is a new campus-wide initiative to support students' health and wellness during their time at the university. Log on to bu.edu to learn more about the Wellbeing Project. Spot On is supported by the Boston University Sargent College's Master of Science degree in Nutrition program. Log on to bu.edu to learn more about this fabulous nutrition graduate program. Thank you for listening to Spot On. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. This way you'll get every new episode every week. And by the way, leave us a nice review. And can you also like us on our Spot On Facebook page and suggest topics for future episodes? Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Joan Salji Blake. And oh, by the way, can you send this episode to five of your friends? Do I ask a lot of you?